Now we're going to talk about the big scary future. Now this includes a lot of the things that we were talking about in terms of picking your college, in terms of selecting your career field or your major. It definitely is connected to that, but I want to take just a moment and kind of think about this disconnected from college. Maybe you're not going to college or maybe uh, this is going to be an after college thing, but in terms of just holistically, how do you choose your course in life? That's a heavy question. And I think I can help. I want to talk about what we call your life's work. This is going to be your legacy. This is going to be sort of your focus in a tangible way. So we all have hobbies. We all have interests. We all have things that we like to do. Uh, not everything we do will be our life's work. Some things that we do are going to just be things that we do. Your life's work is likely to be your career, but it's possible it's not. A great example is if you are a full-time caretaker uh, of your family or of someone else, that may not be per se a career in terms of it may not pay you a lot, um, but it could very well be your life's work. It also might be true that you have a, a job that sustains you financially and you spend a great deal of your time outside of the job doing what you feel to be your true calling and your true work. Now, for most people, your life's work is going to consume a huge amount of your time. It's, it's going to consume, you know, 60%, maybe more of the time that you are awake. So it's important that you are walking down a path that you want. It's important that you're doing something that you're interested and passionate about. Your career will often change. And the more we progress through time, and with each new generation, it seems that your career is more likely to change, and it's more likely to change multiple times. But your life's work can be sort of a guiding direction, a guiding principle throughout career changes, throughout job changes, because it's what you are really setting yourself out to do. So let's start talking about a set of criteria. The first thing is that your life's work should be something you're good at. Okay? It, it should not be something that you are bad at because that's just going to make it that much harder for you to accomplish things in that. How do you know you're good at something? Well, you're recognized by others as being good at it. When compared to a sample group of other people who are doing some of the same stuff that you're doing, you stand out as being one of the people who is a little bit more successful at it. And you have some sort of noticeable achievement. In high school, that's often going to be grades, but not necessarily. There are other things that grades don't measure or grades don't measure very well that you might be very, very good at. So something you are good at. Secondly, it should be something that you enjoy. It should be something that you like to do, that the primarily, the primary duties of it bring you great joy. Um, you can do over and over and over again and not grow tired or bored of it. Now, it is important to note that you may not like every single part of it. There are many parts of my job that I love, and there are some parts of it that I do not. And that's okay because most of the parts of my job that I spend most of the time and energy doing, I really enjoy. And that's where you want to try to find it. You want to try to find something that you really do like. Third, this should be something that earns you a living wage. Now, I want to pause and talk about that for a second. What is a living, living wage? Well, you do not have to be wealthy, right? To, your life's work does not have to make you wealthy, but it should be something that earns you money. Um, one of the biggest differences between a career and a hobby is that typically your career is something that people pay you to do. 
and a hobby is something that you typically pay other people for you to do. Job, you work and get money. A hobby, you pay people so that you can do something. You, you like to ride horses, that costs you money. You like to read books, you gotta go buy them. You wanna go see movies, you have to go buy a ticket. So big difference between a career and a hobby is that a career tends to make you money and a hobby tends to cost you money. Now, in terms of a living wage, it doesn't have to make you rich. All you have to do is look at Hollywood to see that money does not equate to happiness. So don't automatically say, this is going to make me the most money, therefore that's the career I'm going to choose. But if it doesn't make enough money to support you, that's a problem because it's very hard to be happy and fulfilled if you are not able to have a place to live and have food to eat or if you have a family and you cannot provide for your family. It's difficult. It's challenging. It's a rough place to be. And if you can avoid being in that place and you can set yourself up in a place where you're not in that position, you will almost undoubtedly be happier and have an easier time at it. Ultimately, pursuing a path should not make you a financial burden to others. You should not be in a situation where you are constantly having to borrow money, you're constantly having to rely on the generosity of other people. There are some exceptions. There are some uh, career fields in which you are supported by donations, right? That nonprofit organizations or religious or organizations, that's totally different. That is not the same thing. Just because your, your career is funded by donations doesn't mean that you're a financial burden. But if you're constantly trying to pursue something and you're not able to ever reach a point where you are financially sustainable, this is a problem. Now, there are a few exceptions that I mentioned before. If you are a primary caregiver to people, then that may or may not pay you. If you're in the health uh, profession, then you might be hired to be a nurse or a caretaker. But if this is a family member, if, for example, if you're a parent who is staying at home to care for children or to care for elderly or other extended family members, that may not save you or that may not make you any money. But being that will not only pour into your family and benefit them, but it will save your family money from having to pay for an outside caretaker. And I can tell you right now, um, the cost of my children's daycare was more than my mortgage when I had two kids in daycare. So it's incredibly expensive and you want to make sure that uh, <laughs> you're accounting for that. If you, are, if you are going to be someone in your family who is taking up that responsibility, you're effectively earning a lot of money for your family. And then fourth, it should be something that in some way makes the world a better place. Knowing that you have a positive effect, knowing that there is some greater good beyond just the paycheck that you get, that there is something more to your job than just the money you make, that is a really important thing. There are going to be hard days. There are going to be tough times. There are going to be days in which your job that's otherwise fun and fulfilling is not fun and fulfilling. And knowing that you are doing something noble can motivate you to work through these. It can give you a sense of a higher purpose. And there are a lot of ways that you can do that. Almost every career field can give you a chance to do something noble and selfless and beneficial to others, or to do something that is selfish and harmful to others and serves only you and your greed and desires. And you can lie to yourself for a while, but eventually you'll find the truth. And eventually you will realize that what you're doing is basically either making the world better or it's not. And you want to try to find something 
that is making the world better. Now let's recap. It should be something you're good at, that has a, that you are noticed and have some sort of measurable achievement that you're good at it. It should be something that you enjoy doing over and over and over again. It should be something that earns you a living wage, which means you can support yourself and maybe a small amount of your family as well, even if it doesn't make you wealthy. And it should be something that in some way makes the world a better place. Those are the criteria. And I really do believe that if you find something that meets all four of those criteria, you are much more likely to be a content, fulfilled person than if you just pursue something because it's easy or because you think it will make you money or because it's simple or because it's what your parents want you to do. I think that finding something that really hits this criteria is going to be not a guarantee, but much more likely to result in a happier and more fulfilled life. Now, I'm sure you have some great things to say about this and some great topics to bring up, and I would welcome any conversations that you want to have with me on this. So um, you can put it in the comments. Uh, you can you can reach out to me and connect with me personally. I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say about this and seeing what effect this had on you. Um, I hope that these life lessons have been beneficial for you, and I hope that they've given you some guidance. And uh, I just really want to thank you for joining me for all of this. Take care.